pay-per-view here tonight. And uh, it's in the books. Colby Covington, Jorge Masvidal was the main event. Masvidal losing the decision 50-45, 50-44, 49-46. Just signed a new deal. Went out there and got smashed. Both guys hated each other before. They hated each other after. Maybe even more after. I mean, they hated each other so much afterwards. I almost wanted to see the fight again. But uh, yeah, but one-sided main event thrashing by Colby Covington. I mean, it was pretty clear walking out that uh, Masvidal was flat, which he said in his post-match interview. I mean, he just looked, you know, I don't know if he came in injured, um, but he just looked, he just looked flat. And, um, you know, he was taken down over and over. And then as the fight went on, uh, as would be expected, Covington's gas tank was much better than Masvidal's, and he was even outstriking him in the late rounds. Although um, there was one point where um, Masvidal got a knockdown, and Covington was hurt, but he was too tired to follow up on it. And third it round, up, yeah, it ended up mean, not meaning anything. He just, for the most part, I mean, he was he could stop takedowns to a degree, but not enough. In the sense that Covington just kept going and going and would eventually get him down. And once he got him down, Masvidal had a really hard time getting back up. And, um, you know, so, you know, he might have won one round of the five. But, um, yeah, one judge gave him one round. But, I mean, this was five rounds of... I four mean, rounds. I mean, it was four rounds of, of that were pretty one-sided. You could have given... Um, two of them you could have given a, a 10-8. The third yeah, and yeah. the fifth. Yeah, you could have given a couple of ten eights in this one. Yeah, I mean, um, it was they were borderline. It wasn't like there was a round where it was over regularly. Like this is a ten eight round, but there were two rounds. Yeah, where I would say that you certainly could have, and there was no dispute of a decision. And Covington, I mean, Covington looked great, and he's probably the second best guy in the division. He just, you know, I mean, um, Usman's just a different level fighter, and then this was another example of telling you that Usman's just a different level fighter. And, you know, Masvidal is, is a lot like um, Nate Diaz in a lot of ways, in the sense that people really love him, um, and he's marketable and he draws, but he's not as good as people want him to be because he's so damn charismatic. But um, And he's had some spectacular knockouts, but he just, whatever, you know. I mean, he, he said it himself. He just was flat and... Uh, and, you know, I mean, they, again, as the fight went on, you could really see the conditioning edge. And you knew going in that there's going to be conditioning edge. And the whole fight basically came down to could Masvidal stop his wrestling? Because if he couldn't, you know, it was going to be a tough night for him. If he could, he could knock him out. But he couldn't stop his wrestling. And that was the story of the fight. And once Covington was on top in a couple of the rounds, he did a lot of damage. In most rounds, he did damage. It wasn't like he was just holding him down or anything. He would be there he worked for a choke over and over again he never really came close to the choke but he controlled him the whole like he would control him the whole round and then other rounds where he got on top he just elbowed him from the top and just you know busted him up and and yeah it was uh i mean it was a very one-sided fight it was the second round that we had the uh knockdown by uh masvidal third round was a mauling the fifth round was a mauling those were the two that were very one-sided, but I mean, the entire fight was one-sided, which actually was the story of much of the show. Uh, the semi-main was Rafael Dos Anjos and Hanato Moichano, and uh, Hanato took this fight on five days' notice, and so... The, 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 the knockdown was in the fourth round. Uh, th there was a... He clipped him in the second round. Yeah, the knockdown sure. was the the knockdown was the fourth round. He may have knocked him down in the fourth as well, but but I mean he, that that was the one where he knocked him down and he just couldn't he just couldn't follow up. So uh, so uh, Hanato takes his fight on five days' notice, and uh, Dos Anjos just he's brutalizing this guy, and uh, I think it was before there were two rounds. I think it was before <laughs> the third <laughs> round, or maybe it was the fourth round. But regardless, the doctor gets in the ring and he just he looks at the guy, his eyes all swollen, and he does the, follow my finger, can you follow my finger? And uh, Hanato can follow his finger, so the doctor goes, all right, you can, you can fight. So uh, he just keeps getting destroyed, and he's getting mauled, and he's bleeding, but he won't quit. And so before the fifth round, the doctor goes up to get, and he's been mauled so badly that the announcer's like, 
dude, this fight probably should be stopped. The fight should the fight should have been stopped. Um, uh, probably multiple times. But the doctor gets in there, and the doctor looks at him, and uh, the doctor goes up to the referee, and he says, "You know, I'm not against the idea of stopping this fight." Just essentially saying to stop it, and then well, he left it. it was... He left in the hands of the referee. And well, so, in, in the end, it is going to... Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's not, the, I mean end, the doctor could have said stop it. But the doctor was like, no, you know, I would not be opposed to stopping it, but I'm not going to stop it. Right. So he left in the hands of the, the referee. The referee then tells Hanato, you have 30 <laughs> seconds to show me that you can do this or I'm going to be stopping this fight. So uh, they go into this fifth round and uh, Rafael is just like, you know, he's, he's brutalized this guy so badly that it, I mean, even the announcers were like, he's turned this into a sparring match. He wasn't, you know, strongly trying to take his head off. He wasn't, I mean, he was trying for takedowns, but not like he'd been doing in earlier rounds. And uh, Hinato survived. And then in like the last minute, Hinato starts landing these shots. And he's, he's rocking Dos Anjos. And so then Dos Anjos turned it up again, but by then it was over. So, uh, I mean, he, I, I, he didn't, he carried him in that fifth round. Which was funny because then, but he did get he did get hurt at the end. You he know, did get he got hurt at the end because he'd been carrying him for four minutes. Yeah, but he he could have, um, yeah. I mean, he could have put on a lot more pressure. But at the other on the other hand, with as, as much as he was ahead, because this fight also, you know, I mean, I thought that there was one ten eight round, and there probably was and possibly two. And but either way, I mean, he was so far ahead, he could have just run away from him. You know, while he'd get called, he'd get penalized for stalling but he could he could have just done nothing in the fifth round and just taken no chances and not let the guy near him to where he could even hit him because he had the decision in the bag and he did get close enough to where the guy you know where um you know mccono hit him you know several times and uh not that I don't think he ever really hurt him, but they were solid shots. I mean, they were good shots. Yeah, he hit him. I mean, he was he was trying to finish the fight in the fifth round, and uh, Dos Anjos was not. And the funny thing is, is uh, they do all those tweets from the media, and uh, these all these people are tweeting that this is the fight of the night. <laughs> I mean, a, you can you can brutal. vote for whatever you want, but I mean, it was a one sided four rounds, and then one guy carried the guy for the fifth round. So I'm not sure that I could say that this was the best fight of the night. Well, you know what it was is, is is everybody. You know, it's one of those things, and it's it's it's. I mean, it's a good thing from the drama standpoint, but it's a bad thing too. In the idea that um, you know Moicano showed you know that great heart, and he did. You know, because a guy's not gonna, a guy's not. I mean, some guys would quit. Okay, I mean, but a lot of fighters won't quit and he certainly did not he had not an ounce of quit in him and he, but even in the fight i mean bisping and and joe rogan were talking about how corners you know in, in mma like unlike in boxing where a corner will stop the fight in, in a situation like this and probably would have early because he was he really it was it was bad because he took a bad beating after the point that he was you know pretty much like the two or three times it could have been stopped like really after round three you know, I thought, you know, I mean, you know, they, they did, they gave him the eye test as I worked, but I mean, his, he was brutalized, um, but they let him come out. He got brutalized again at that point, you know, and there was a couple of times in that round where I was just like, stop it. You know, it wasn't like overt where I'm, I'm going to say that it was negligent on the part because there was no point where he was so brutalized, but it was just the feeling. And I mean, you know, Rogan said the same thing. You know, it was just like, you know, look, why is he taking all this punishment to, you know, we know he's a tough guy, but one of the things that, you know, the referees and, you know, the referees in particular, I mean, I'm not going to say the corner, the corner should, but that's not going to happen in MMA, but the referees, one of their jobs is to, you know, keep guys from taking needless punishment. I mean, he had no chance to win. I know he got some shots in the fifth round and it was. This is all ironic given the main event tonight. In what sense? I mean, I mean, um, Vidal's taken so many beatings, and uh, I mean, but he was never, he was never in. I mean, there were points where it was, where it was, it was not good, but it was not like. No, I'm not talking about this particular fight. I'm talking about him as a fighter, like him as as a fighter tonight. I mean, he didn't show much at all, really, and uh, no, no, he really probably partially because he's taken so many beatings in his career. Well, time catches up with everyone. 
I mean, and 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 he's had he had fifty fights, and before he had fifty um, sanctioned fights. He had many unsanctioned fights. He had street fights. He had backyard fights. He's a warrior, you know. What I mean, like you know, and that's one of the reasons people really like him, and he's a big, you know, he's a big star and everything. But yeah, all those fights, um, you know, they they're going to catch up to you. You're going to you're going to have all your injuries and your your pains and things like that. You're not going to be able to train as hard. I mean, that's just that's just the reality of it. So we had Bryce Mitchell and Edson Barboza, and uh, this was another one-sided fight. Yeah, Bryce Mitchell destroyed this dude: thirty twenty-five, thirty twenty-six, thirty twenty-seven. So one judge gave no ten eights, one judge gave one ten eight, and one judge gave two ten eights to Bryce Mitchell. So now in this one, I gave two ten eights. I mean, I, I mean, can... it was a total one-sided, violent beating. Yeah, and, uh, Bryce Mitchell just it was, it was the same thing as Colby, but but a lot worse in the sense that it was even more dominant. I mean, Bryce Mitchell would just take him down at the beginning of the round and just beat the hell out of him the whole round, and and you know that was you know basically the story of the fight, especially as the fight went on. You know, Barbosa, um, you know he he always fought at one fifty five. He dropped to one forty five when he got older. And you know one of the things that I have seen, you know, and I saw it with Ed Frankie Edgar and and a lot of guys that you know you think that they're fighting at too high of a weight class, and then they get older and they're not doing as well in the high weight class, so they go to a lower weight class, and you think they're going to do better. But they don't because when you're older and you're cutting more weight, you lose even more strength. Like you can, your body can recuperate from a cut better when you're younger. When you're older, it, it it's you know the toll on your body is harder. And I think that like with Barboza, I just think that he, you know, I mean, I mean you know, he's thirty six years old, and you know, and this is a reflex sport when it's a light in the lightweight division, and that's just how it goes, you know, and. Um, I mean, he wasn't, you know, Barboza's not as quick as he used to be. Not that that really mattered. He just, because he basically got out-wrestled. And Mitchell looked good. I mean, he's uh, he's impressive. He, after, at the end of the fight, he said that of his $90,000 purse, he's going to donate 45000 to charity. Arkansas, you know, uh, kids that uh, are, you know, suffering from medical problems. And it's not like, I mean, that's, a, you know, if he's doing that, I mean, you got to give him all the credit in the world because it's not like Mitchell, you know, like if, it, if, it's, if it's a guy and, and, it's, and it's great no matter who does it. Don't get me wrong. Forty five thousand dollars is a lot of money to donate. But if you're a guy who's like, you know, multi, multi, multi millionaire, John Jones or Conor McGregor, it's like that's a drop in the bucket. But a guy like Bryce Mitchell, who's never really made big money, he may in the future, but he's never made big money. And now he's got a ninety thousand dollar payoff and he's given forty five thousand away. I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you could say. And I saw like the Ariel Hawani interview with Bryce Mitchell and it was kind of, um, you know. I mean, it was it was not good in, in in a sense. But having said that, I mean, you know, I mean, he said he said some really bad things. But you know, I mean, that was a nice gesture. No matter what, no matter what he said, that's a nice gesture of him. Yep. So um, yeah, uh, it was interesting when when Dana made the comment about how uh, you're not donating your money, I'll donate it. Because now, like every fighter is going to pull this. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Bryce even said, like, um, what, what did he say? He said something like, uh, um, I got the ball rolling or something. But well, uh, if, Dana, if Dana agreed to donate, that's good, too. It is, no, it is great. It's great. Yeah, it's But, great. Uh, you know, they're going to have all these fighters that are going to be offering to uh, donate their well, personal you know, charities. Dana, Dana, and then Dana, you've got to... Dana, Dana's, Dana's not going to, like, you know, there's there's a point, you know what I mean, where he ain't going to get played, you know what I mean, like, if it, if, it, if it comes like that. But I think that maybe in this situation, plus, you know, here's another thing, too. Um, you know, they're always, they're always criticized, and rightly so, for what they pay the fighters. And I think that the idea that this guy put on, you know, I mean, he had a dominant performance and it was a, you know, it was a star making performance for him because Barboza is a star and he dominated him completely. And, um, you know, um, it's, it's um, you know, giving away half your purse and it's and saying it's 90000 I think a lot of people would look and go, God, $90,000, you know, shouldn't we be getting paid more? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, well, now he's at least getting his ninety thousand. And actually, he didn't even get a uh, performance of the night bonus, even though that was <laughs> one of the more impressive performances of the night. It was uh, Kevin Holland, who actually was in the uh, 
next match against Alex Oliveira, and uh, he beat him in 38 seconds of the second round. I, th I thought Oliveira actually won the first round, but... Kevin the first Holland round just... was great. That was a great fight, yeah. Yeah, they had a fantastic fight, and then, uh, yeah, uh, second round, he just got elbowed to death and beaten quickly. But, uh, yeah, this one, down? I thought this was, was a... a uh, a potential fight of the night just because of how exciting the first round was. But there were some, uh, good, there were some good under there were some good fights on the undercard. I, I Masvidal and Colby got the uh, yeah, which surprised me. So from you know it was exciting if you were you know I mean like for for crowd heat you know the crowd was very very hot for the fight, but I really didn't think it was that great of a fight. Um, I thought like in some ways the Moicano fight you know even though it was even more one sided was. You know, you at least had that story of this guy who wouldn't quit, so it was a story there. But, um, I mean, there were real good undercard fights. The, um, the Zunon and Marina Rodriguez, Rodriguez, was, was very good. Um, you know, um, there's a couple of others down there that, uh, you know, I thought were, you know, could have been in this one. You know, as far as, like, first round of this fight, yeah, the Oliveira fight was, was a great round. And then uh, Sergey Spivak beat Greg Hardy via TKO 216. Just uh, took him down and pounded him out. Once he was on the ground, that was it for Greg Hardy. Yeah, which has always been the case. Um, I, this was also the last fight of Greg Hardy's contract, and he's lost a lot of fights. And he's, you know, he's not improved enough to be a UFC heavyweight at this point. I don't know why they didn't give up on him earlier. And, I mean, I, for, for a lot of very good reasons. I mean, you know, again, because of the 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 beating of ever, of his girlfriend and everything like that, even though, you know, she didn't testify against him and he, it got overturned in an appeal and everything like that. But, I mean, there's, you know, uh, medical reports and stuff and the people have seen, you know, I mean, Greg Hardy, I just feel Greg Hardy probably shouldn't have been, I mean, even more than probable, he shouldn't have been in UFC. I know the NFL brought him back afterwards um, and... Do I really expect UFC to have higher standards in the NFL? Yeah, probably not. But, I mean, he's an NFL star player. He was not a UFC star fighter. Um, and early on, the, you know, the notoriety that they could get, and, you know, ESPN, going on ESPN with Greg Hardy fighting and everything like that, the curiosity, there was business in him. I mean, no doubt, and that's why they hired him, was because there was business in him. But, you know, each fight, when the novelty of the football star fighting, it goes more and more away. And then when he started losing, it was kind of like, okay, he's he's not good enough to compete at this level. Um, if he was showing great improvement in every fight, it would be one thing, but he really wasn't. I mean, he's he can hit hard early. Um, he can take a punch but his skill level was not improving that much, and his skill on the ground was not good at all, as this fight showed him. Mean, it's not like Spivak, some of the world beater or anything like that. You know, once, you know, he was much smaller, but once he got him down, you know, it was kind of like, you know, Hardy had nothing, you know, after all these years, and, you know, I mean, it's not like he's a rookie anymore. I mean, when he first started, it's one thing, but it's been years of him training, and once he was down, he had, you know, it's like he had nothing on the ground. All right, take us through the undercard. Okay, hold on. Let me uh, get my notes here. Um, so the first fight, well, I've, okay, so this, this, this is from the, um, the ESPN fights. I didn't see the early fights, but uh, Marina Moros um, from Poland and Maria Ag Agapova, um, who were teammates and uh, training partners at one point, who also had a falling out very similar to the main event, um, Moros pretty much dominated the fight. It was another one just like that. Um, Moros looked very, very good. Akabova uh, looked like she just was not in her league. And it was interesting because uh, Dean Thomas, who was, you know, doing some of the reporting and everything, who's also from ATT, just like these two women were from ATT, um, said this is kind of like how their training sessions used to go, you know? And so it's like, I think they both, because they trained together so much, I think that they probably both knew how this fight was going to go, and it did. Um, but Agapova, you know, she she had some moments where she got an escape. She went for an armbar in the first round. Um, she got she even got her back at one point. But um, second round, Moroz took her down, got her back, throwing 
elbows from the top, got her back again, punching her, got the mount, head and arm choke, and it was over, tap out. Um, you know, Moreau's very, very happy. She's from the Ukraine, so obviously a very uh, emotional period for her. Um, and then Kennedy Neschuk um, and Nikolai um, Negumarianu. This, these, if it, you, these names were impossible. But anyway, um, this was very curious. Okay, so um, the first round, it felt like it was kind of a sparring match, and Nesuchu just kind of, um, you know, I, I thought won the round. Second round, um, you know, he won clearly won the round. First round, I thought he won the round, um, and and not. I mean, sort of close, but not really. Second round, clearly he won. Third round, um, so Nishuku, um had did three eye pokes. This was the third one in the third round. So at this point, they had to call a penalty point. And then, you know, like um, Negu, Negu Mariana was, he was having a hard time seeing, but he said he could see. The doctor asked, can you see? And he said, yes. And he wanted to continue to fight. And then he came out and he won the round, you know, after looking like he was going to be blinded. Um, you know, he uh, was, he got, um, you know, at first he got some, some really good shots on him. It looked like, oh my God, he can't see out of the eye. This is just really, this is a bad situation. But he just, um, you know, he got a takedown and um, he won the round. So, I actually had it a 2020 draw, which no judge had. One judge had 29-27, which would mean that uh, they had, um, you know, Njuku winning all three rounds, but the penalty point. And the third round was not so dominant that that was a bad score. And then the other two had 29-27 for Negumi, Negumarai, Marai, whatever. So anyway, he... This was brutal, just even trying to pronounce this. But anyway, he um, he got this the split decision. I don't know how he got two rounds. Um, and two judges gave him two rounds. I mean, I could see the third. I really couldn't see the first, even though it was not a one-sided round. But, you know, I could. I absolutely could have seen a draw. I thought it was going to be a draw or a 29-27 um, the other way. Uh, Marino Rodriguez and Zan uh, Jan Zionan. Um, both ranked at 115, um, number three and number four, um, as far as contenders. Um, and, uh, Marina looks like, uh, she's probably, um, let's see, that she's probably going to, um, get, um, a title shot perhaps, but she won 29, 28, 28, 29, 29, 28. I thought she won the fight. Um, so a split decision and then uh, very good fight. Um, Jalen Turner and uh, Malarkey um, and um, first round um, Malarkey won it 10, nine second round. Um, the Turner finished him with punches on the ground. He landed a right hook punches on the ground, 46 seconds around two. This was a good fight. Um, you know, and um, yeah, that was it. All righty. We've got the, uh, oh, Khabib Hall of Fame. Khabib Hall of Fame, yeah. That's yeah. right. Well, well, he's certainly deserving. I mean, if you're going to do a mixed martial arts Hall of Fame, I'm going to tell you a guy that should be in it Khabib Nurmagomedov. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, that was a, when I saw that pick, it's kind of like, well, there's no controversy there. 29 and 0, uh, beat everyone. You know, I mean, just they were talking about his fight with Justin Gaethje, you know, which was his last fight in a win. And Justin Gaethje is like the number one contender for the lightweight title right now. And Khabib, I mean, Khabib toyed with him and like, you know, and I mean, he pretty much like, I mean, yeah, he's, he's one of the, the greatest fighters of all time. I mean, you could argue who number one is. I don't think he... I don't think he lasted long enough or went long enough to where I would rank him above George St. Pierre, even though he's, he had a perfect record. St. Pierre didn't. Um, but you know, if you saw, if you said like Khabib's the greatest, I would never argue it either. I mean, he's, um, 
you know, and it's certainly one of the, you know, if you're going to name the five greatest, he's he's got to make the list. So, yeah, surefire Hall of Famer. So WWE ran in Madison Square Garden last night, and uh, I've got to ask a lot. There's a lot of question, Dave. Okay, there's a lot of questions right now. So I actually want to. I actually want to. Well, hold on. Let me let me just say this. Okay. Does this guy have any idea what he's doing? Which guy? Vince. I will tell you that when I saw what happened, I thought like did something change because this was a such a okay so essentially here's what happened okay so this is this was taped i mean they had a whole card and and, then one real quick thing so randy orton wrestled on the card randy orton was hurt on monday okay he would he was we we you know we talked about that he was hurt but obviously not hurt bad because he you know he wrestled tonight i mean if he was hurt bad maybe he would do monday but he could certainly take the weekend off in fact they actually added his match at the very end so gable and otis beat randy orton and riddle at the garden tonight but um so the the big thing which was filmed is uh brock lesnar defending against a mystery opponent who turns out to be austin theory and yes everybody groaned i groaned reading it i heard when people saw it couldn't believe it dude listen hold on a second before we even go any further they were not happy with how Madison Square Garden had been drawing in the past. No. And so they've been hyping up on television and trying to sell tickets to this show and talking about Brock and Lesnar succeeding. getting beating, beaten before WrestleMania. All this bullshit, and then they bring out Austin Theory as the mystery. Like, so, okay, so you sold some tickets this time, but who's going to come out to this show next time when you do this kind of hype? Okay, well, here, here's the thing. They because it's so long before they go back, they may not like if they were coming back next month. They think people yeah. are stupid. If they were coming back next month, they're they're going to do you know four thousand people, maybe less. Yes, they would. You know, they do a one minute twenty five second main event, and they put Austin Theory in the main event after promising you know a world class Madison Square Garden level opponent. Um, and then at the end, you know, which is the most ironic thing of all, Roman Reigns, you know, beats him down and Lesnar bleeds like crazy. So it's like all this talk. We Wait don't a have second. Blood. You're telling me he bled? He bled. That's the angle. You're yes. telling me that Brian Danielson is in AEW right now because he wasn't allowed to bleed. And then Roman Reigns bleeds. No, no, or no. Brock, Brock Lesnar. Lesnar. Brock Lesnar bled. Yes. Uh, Brock, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Pretty fucking weird. Huh? It's not weird. It's, you know, they do blood at times. I mean, it's like Vince does not allow much blood. Very rare. Usually, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, when I think about it, it's usually like, you know, Brock Lesnar. Because Brock kind of gets to do whatever he wants, which is one of the key things. And I guess, you know, to sell Madison Square Garden, I mean, to sell the WrestleMania match, he felt that it was time to bleed. You know, I mean, and he's very willing to do it. Um, to build up a match. I mean, that's so he did, but yeah. So he's bleeding, which is just hilarious because how many times is you know that was the whole thing Vince used on AW and everything like that is you know whatever. But yeah, they did the blood. So anyway, they did that, and then Roman Reigns. Okay, so the Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins was this is another weird one. Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins was advertised. <laughs> Roman and then the Reigns last week, and Seth Rollins. This is another good one. Okay, so um, so the Lesnar match goes a minute and a half. I think it was a minute and 25 seconds or a minute 35, something like that. Um, so Roman Reigns wrestles Seth Rollins, or, or it was advertised for Seth Rollins. And the week before, they pull it for Roman Reigns to have a mystery opponent, and it turns out to be Seth Rollins. I mean, why would you pull the advertising? And Roman Reigns beats him in, like, literally five minutes with a guillotine. I mean, it's like, it's not even that they go out there, well, we're going to do a one minute and a half main event. So Rowan and Seth, you know, pick up the slack, do a good 20 minute match, give the people a great match. No, they do a five minute, you know, you know, sort of school. I mean, I guess the, you know, I mean, I know the deal is, is that Roman and Brock just destroy everyone. That's the thing. But, you know, I mean, or it's like, it's like Seth, you know, like Seth's like one of their top guys. I mean, he's. Whatever. So anyway, they do that. That's what happened. And then um, Ronda Rousey and Naomi beat Shayna Baszler. Um, not Shayna, uh, they beat um, Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville when um, 
uh, Ronda tapped out um, Charlotte with the armbar. So, in fact, that's what they did there. So, um, I guess that was something that they gave him is a Charlotte Flair tap out. But, uh, yeah, the... Even that one, it's like, what'd you do that for? <laughs> like, of all of the decisions, I also well, question that the, one. Well, yeah, the, the, the challenger, the challenger beats the champion by tap out, and, you know, guess. right before the pay-per-view. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, you know, I would have thought they would beat DeVille, but it's better to beat Rousey, really. Uh, I mean, better to beat uh, Flair, really. So there's nothing, I mean, it's probably the right call, but, um, but man, that Austin Theory thing, and um, just I heard so much negativity coming out of it and it's like yeah if they had a show if they were going to come back to the garden um now they're going to do a barclays and that has a bad advance right now that's um they've got they've got that on uh one of the tvs you know going in you know this month later in the month so they are actually coming back to the market very soon it's just incredible because like when i when i want to give my business to a company i want to feel like you know i gave i gave the company my money and the company did their best to, like, well, here, here, give here, me here, my here. money's worth. This okay. is like, if I would have given them my money, this would have felt like, all right, we got we got his money, so fuck him. We're just going yeah. to give him off the theory is... in the main event. We got his money yeah. already. Yeah, but I, I mean, should like, never feel like that. You know, they charged $500 for ringside. Yeah. I mean, this is the highest price. I bet price. those people were the, thrilled. Yeah, I mean, the Garden's the highest price ticket um, that they, that you know, of any arena they run because of the highest cost. Um to run it so um yeah i mean it's like and and they got you know i mean the gate was probably really big um you know and it was all because of the tv hype i mean because the advance until ronda was announced because even with brock the advance wasn't that great you know and they even with roman and everything like that because they they come too often and they're cold in the market and all that you know um so they go in there and they hype the thing and they basically tell you you're going to get this great angle and they did get an angle, but you know you, you know when Lashley's out of the match and then I mean replacing with Austin Theory I mean it's like you know you could have done Drew McIntyre you could have done Randy Orton you could have done something you could have done Kevin Owens right I mean his, was there and all he did was um. You know he's supposed to, he's a heel and all he did was stun the Miz and Miz TV. So it's like it's not like you could have put Kevin Owens in the spot, right? And you know Kevin Owens at least you don't groan. I mean it's like I mean I mean yeah the people you know who all expected was going to be Cody Rhodes. I mean they did nothing to tell you it was going to be Cody Rhodes. That's on the fans who thought that. But the fact is is that even even though they didn't tell you, man, that uh, Austin Theory, that's a I don't know, man, putting that's a ballsy move and one that I would never do to my customers, man. That's that was I, I again, I can't I can't even I was stunned. I was stunned at that. Well, what do we have for WrestleMania now? What are the updates? Well, 